So um, as you can see from the uh, from the slide, you know, the Algoma Oichi is quite large. We're about 32,000 square kilometers, which is larger than some European countries. And if you were to drive east to west, it'd be about four hours. Not on a day like today, when we've gotten about 25 centimeters of snow. But for as geographically large as we are, our attributed population is about 103,000. So a very small population uh, centered around uh, urban centers or large communities, about 75%. Currently, we uh, the Northeast, all 27 acute care hospitals are in the process of migrating to a single instance of Meditech Expanse. So as of early 2024, all 27 acute care sites will be on the same instance of Meditech Expanse. And that provides a bit of a context as to how in the North we think about digital health from a, a regional perspective, um, and that acute care uh, uh, tends to take uh, the, the first step forward in terms of digital health and guide the region as to what they're doing. Um, in 2019, Suaria Hospital, North Bay Regional uh, Health Centre, as well as West Perry Sound were the first acute care sites to go on the single instance of Meditech Expanse and the rest of the hospitals will be going on, the, the other 24 sites will be going live in the next year. So this has been a huge focus of our acute care sites, um, particularly the three that are within the Algoma OHT. So lots of resources and capacity uh, uh, into, into that effort. We've also had another uh, large scale digital health project in Algoma in the last few years. So our group health center, which is a primary care organization uh, serving almost 60,000 patients uh, upgraded their EMR. And so lots of capacity and lots of resources to support and move forward with their digital health projects. So as you can see, in terms of the context as to where we are in Algoma the last few years, when the OHT is starting to ramp up our work, we've really had our largest organizations focus on large scale digital health projects within their own organizations. Um, Therefore, our approach to digital health has really had to reflect that environment and the capacity available for larger digital health projects. Digital health has been a part of our work since the beginning of the OHT. Uh, we leveraged online appointment booking for our COVID-19 mass immunization clinics. We delivered over 70,000 doses of the vaccine through our MIC uh, and used that platform, the online appointment booking platform to help support uh, to support the administration of that work. Uh, that was in coordination with 17 other organizations within the community. So for many, uh, many of our partners, that was really the first instance or the first uh, iteration of online appointment booking that they had been exposed to. So back to that point that Andrew had made in terms of you know, that that some digital health or the cohort one, even though it's happened during the pandemic, it afforded us these different opportunities to try things uh, because of the environment that we were in. In continuation of that and in collaboration with our primary care partners, we've leveraged funding for online appointment booking. So all of our primary care organizations that are AOHT partners are either live with online appointment booking or in the process of going live. To provide a bit of perspective as to how primary care is organized in Algoma, 90 to 95% of primary care in Algoma is organized into either a family health team model, a nurse practitioner led clinic, or as I discussed before, the group health center model, which is our largest primary care organization. So this provides us with a great opportunity to have large impact on digital health implementations. Together with our partners here at hospital, we've also leveraged remote care monitoring to implement seamless MD for post-surgical conditions. So hip and knee replacements, urology, um, minor procedures and day surgeries. They will be, or Surrey Hospital in conjunction with Group Health Center and the AOHD will be expanding this platform for CHF and COPD discharges. And the extension of this digital health tool will align with our direction over the next year in complex chronic disease pathway development. This aligns with our overall approach of digital health progress. So 
Rather than have several standalone digital health projects, we focused on attaching digital health advances with our population health management work. And this seems to be the most effective way for us to advance our digital health portfolio. So as an example, last year we implemented two pilots focusing on uh, older adults living with frailty um, or at risk of developing frailty in the community. So the two main projects was the first and early frailty identification pilot and a coordinated access to geriatric services pilot. So with the early frailty ID program, we work closely with the Center for Effective Practice to build the assessment form that the clinician would use during that visit with the patient in ocean forms. And Building it in ocean forms allowed the clinician to enter the information into the assessment form and that information to flip back into the provider's EMR. What we also did through that ocean form was build in the appropriate navigations, depending on how the clinician was entering information to the assessment, it would um, it would alert the, the provider to what the services for that particular need of the patient were. So if there was a need for nutrition, that information would populate into the form and ease that referral um, or that continuation of service for the patient into the community. This helped with some, some seamless transitions into care. And so to improve all of those, those transitions and you know moving the patient between services, we developed a singular access form to support coordination among our specialized geriatric services. So we developed a paper form uh, paper referral form, um, but we also ensured that there was a corresponding e-referral available for local physicians. So our findings show that the paper version was definitely more popular of the two, but that we did receive a high volume of e-referrals instead uh, as well. And so in the local uh, context of Algoma, uh, the Surya Hospital has um, has kind of taken taken the lead in terms of implementing ocean and using ocean e referral, um, and 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 kind of pulling primary care along along that way. So this was a, a another way of introducing e referral to the community. From a regional perspective, the seven OHTs in the northeast. Um, have worked together and collaborated on an initial project focused on episodic access to virtual care. So we are collaborating and sharing resources to design and support virtual care for those in the Northeast and are currently in the design phase with implementation planned for fiscal 24-25. And over the first you know, iterations of community digital health projects, we've learned a lot about our community um, and much of what we learned is helping to advance and contextualize our next steps. And, you know, a lot of the, the findings that we've learned over the last, you know, few years really align to what's, you know, being discussed through Andrew's, Andrew and team's research. And the first is that organizations in our community still perceive digital health to be an internal operational portfolio. Um, it's still very siloed um, with uh, not a lot happening in the community, uh, but in terms of integration. There is a elevated risk adversity to sharing information and data between organizations. So again, aligned to a lot of those findings of that research. And that technological infrastructure is definitely more precarious than initially thought. Yes, in rural remote, we definitely have issues, but there's actually a lot of uh, infrastructure issues closer to the urban centers. So what we've done in terms of helping to support some of that work, particularly for sharing information, is we initiated a privacy community of practice to support the foundations needed for information sharing. We recognize that many organizations do not have a dedicated FTE associated with privacy, while others had entire departments. So as a way to support the understanding of PHIPAA and increase capacity throughout the community, the privacy community of practice are developing strategies, sharing resources, and learning from one another. Um, and, um, the other, you know, next step that we're taking is actually connecting with a local primary care uh, physician who has interest in digital help to start, uh, leading some of those digital health conversations and innovation within the community. Mm -hmm.